everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Zahir here. I'm happy to be back and uploading another video. It is a little late in the week uploading. I'm aware of that. My birthday was on Wednesday so I just decided to take a bit of time off and just played a lot of Echo, a bit of Apex Legends, watched a bit of anime and I still wanted to upload this week. I just wanted to kind of push it back a little bit so that's why I'm uploading in the weekend. And yeah, so I did take your feedback and I know you want me to keep the videos a little bit shorter but there was so much news this week it's just going to be impossible to make it less than 15 minutes or so so I do apologize for that I have timestamps below in case you want to skip through them and you want to just listen to bits and pieces the same thing is going to be for the next video this was actually supposed to be just one video but it was so much juicy news this week that it had to be split into two different videos this video is going to be mostly news related while the next video is going to be to do with the forums because Jeff has been on the forums quite a lot so if you want to check that out it'll be in the card on the top right as well so let's just get started with some basic news so Echo came out on the 14th of April and in case you don't know how to get her achievements this is how you would get them so the first one is called adaptability and and basically to get that you would have to be using two other heroes ultimates without dying as Echo in quick or competitive play. So to complete this achievement you will need to use Echo's ultimate ability at least twice without dying. So that would be without dying during the ultimate. So as you know yourself if you get killed while you are replicating another character then you will essentially die but then you know kind of go back to being Echo at full HP. So that needs to not happen. You need to be able to fully time out your entire ultimate and your entire replication at least twice. Once you get it twice, you'll get the achievement adaptability. The second one then would be focused and the focused is to earn two killing blows with a single use of Echo's focusing beam on quick play or competitive play. So with that, to get that, I would just pair up with a Sigma, wait until he ults, when he ults, everyone will be down to 50 HP. You could get even more than two killing blows with that. You just go full beam on whoever's left there and you'd, you'd be able to do a full cleanup. So that would be a really good combo that I found in the games that I've been having recently. It's it's definitely a really, really good combo to have. So yeah, you just finish off two targets, same beam, and you get your second achievement, which is called focused. So that's really it for that. Then next we've got the hero pools and the map pool. So map pools will cover first. So the map pools 14th of April, they were forgotten, you could say. They are no longer going to be doing the map pools. They have decided to just remove that from the game entirely. And what they've been saying on that is, however, we saw a lot of feedback asking for map pools to vary more often than every two months at the start of a competitive season. And and they've explained some suggested one month, others two weeks, and some even one week rotation periods. However, if map pools were to rotate more frequently, it would stop providing the competitive season with the identity that we were going for. In addition, if we change the map pool faster, you might not even notice that maps were missing or back from one cycle to the next. So I think that's a really good point. That they're making and that's the whole reason as to why they introduced map pools in the first place at the beginning they were saying that they wanted to give the season a bit of an identity and they were very excited about that they took what the community wanted which was more map variety and they decided to couple that in together with the fact that everyone was complaining that the seasons were just kind of bleeding into one another and there was really no novelty to them and no real reason to kind of look up to the next season because it was just going to be the same thing. You don't really place anywhere new on the ladder and there's really nothing new except the competitive spray of the previous season that you were in. So there's really not 
much new going on there and they were really excited to add that to kind of give the season a bit of an identity so I do understand where they're coming from with that that if they were to change up the map pools throughout the same season then it'll no longer have that effect so what I came up with this is my own opinion I don't really agree with the removal of uh, map pools I liked map pools it actually did give me the time to learn out the maps a lot more in quick play the games are not long enough to do that some of us in fact most of us just do not have the time to go into custom games and run through all the maps and you know have a look as to where everything is you're gonna mostly be learning it by playing on the same maps and you're gonna start realizing oh this person came out of this corner like how did they even get there and then you explore that corner and you see oh there's like this alleyway I've never seen before and that happened to me after map pools came out I didn't realize how much I didn't know I can vault I actually did not know a lot of little side routes that were there in the first place so for example on a point a I didn't know that there was the little tunnel on the left hand side where you could hop down um, and I should be showing you in this video right now just so that it's a little bit clearer for you to understand which one I'm talking about. And I didn't know that this was actually available there in the first place. I also didn't know that it was possible to walk through from the top floor of the house all the way through to the other side of the map. I didn't know that was a route that was available either. And then the third one that I wasn't aware of that was available was the route that goes in and around on the side of the bridge. I had no idea yeah, that was there at all until map pools actually came in and we started playing the same maps throughout the season and so it actually gave me a lot more experience on them because I never really got to play I can vault that often at all when map pools weren't a thing so it's the kind of thing that it really I think it really benefits uh, in terms of gameplay and game sense people actually start really knowing where they're supposed to go and and why as well you know like where they can stay to have a certain view of the enemy team but that's going to be taken away again so I'm thinking what if we kind of go in between now I don't know if it's just me or if any of you will agree but the way I feel is that the competitive seasons on their own are just way too long they drag on for ages like Every time I'm like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm sick of seeing this rank here and I'm sick of like playing for a rank that I'm not climbing that much. And I'm realizing the reason I'm not climbing it that much is because I don't really have that motivation that I had at the beginning of the season. Every time my season comes out, I'm like, right, so this, we're starting fresh, I'm placing, and then I'm going to try and climb higher. And it always happens. I place and I start climbing higher and I get about halfway through the rank in fact on dps for example i climbed my bronze all the way to silver so i really do put in a lot of effort and i do my best and i climb up higher but then it starts dragging on and it just feels like i am playing without not really any rewards and i'm sure this is a very common feeling for a lot of people out there playing the game and that's why you know they were saying hey let's add you know map pools for a bit of identity that's great that's really good it did have help quite a lot but they're still really really long seasons so what if we kind of meet halfway and we go right so why don't we make the seasons shorter and still keep the map pools within those seasons and since the seasons are shorter we're also gonna get a faster variety of what the map pools are gonna be like because I mean two to three months of one season that's just I <sighs> that's just way too much that in my opinion anyway like I don't know if you guys feel the same do let me know but for me it's just way too long so I think that would be a really good kind of meet halfway then the second thing uh, would be the hero pools so hero pools they're now going to be in line with overwatch league as in they're going to be the same as overwatch league but from what I understand overwatch league is not going to be following its own pick rate they're going to be following the whole player base's pick rate and they're going to be banning based on that and it's gonna be its own algorithm and it's gonna be picking from um, a certain percentage and it's still gonna have somewhat of a random effect but it's not gonna be as random as someone you know like picking out of a basket or a cat 
walking on the card because yes that has happened they've had a cat picket before so i think definitely it'll be interesting to see i hope echo doesn't get banned in the next week but that has been actually discussed on the forums where jeff has actually been having his own input on it saying that you know maybe it's it's not so bad and they didn't want to really interfere with that and i agree because it's not the end of the world just like any other character that you know even more than echo if they get banned for a week you just pick something else really and that week is over and you get to pick that character again they can't be banned two weeks in a row so it should be fine the only thing that i am worried about is that it can alternate weeks so once she gets banned and people play other things when she comes back she's gonna get picked quite a lot again i'm pretty sure and what i'm worried about is you know that she's gonna be banned like one week and then the week after that you know not not the next week but the one that she's actually allowed to be banned again and i think that's gonna be a lot of banning it's already happened with reinhardt but i can understand you know it was like brand new algorithm uh, reinhardt is very much used so that's why he's get picked quite a lot but that's the thing if they base it all on pick rate then it's gonna start really you're gonna start seeing the same characters getting banned and that's what i'm afraid of i really don't want to see the same characters getting banned very very often just because they're you know the ones that work best and the ones that have the best meta then we're gonna be seeing mainly almost two metas get played all the time alternating each week and i'm not really looking forward to that i don't know if uh if anyone else feels the same now i know that there's a little bit of randomization to it but from the way it's been described anyway it doesn't sound like the randomization will be too random and it It'll be more based on what people are mostly picking and that worries me but that is just me of course maybe and uh, here is a comment anyway that they were saying they said we've heard that some aspects of the hero pool system are confusing or unclear including why certain heroes or roles are rotated each week or why the exact number of heroes available is inconsistent from week to week and in addition having separate hero pools for competitive play and overwatch league in the same week led to a confusing or disjointed experience for players who follow the league which yes that was true but honestly i followed the league and i didn't really find it too much of a big deal I found it fair that we would have our bands and they would have theirs I didn't find it fair that we had bands that would be something like all hit scans are banned today or all the main heals are banned today obviously at the end we saw that the hit scan you know led to some very good changes um, in terms of both ash and farah which i'm happy about both but it was very painful to a lot of our sr to go through to have all the hit scans banned from the game from competitive games so it was something that obviously that's what was painful for me i don't know if you guys are the same or not but that is what made it annoying for me. Not the fact that they were different from the Overwatch League, but the fact that the method in the way they were picked was different. Because if the same method would have been applied to us, I would have found it just fine. You get the characters that have a 10% or higher pick rate and it gets randomly picked for them and maybe make it even more fun. And as they are banning for Overwatch League, they pick the bans for the rest of the users. So at least there would be some consistency in how it's picked even though they're different and that would make a lot of sense because obviously not all of us are pros so it would be unfair for us to have the same bands based on what the pros are picking but I feel that this is not going to be really beneficial to how things were before because there's less randomization from what I understand. I definitely prefer that it's just one tank and one support that are banned and two DPS. I would prefer that. In fact, I thought that was the way it was supposed to be from the beginning because that's how it was explained. But they they kind of left out the part that, oh no, we were just explaining Overwatch League. You know, you guys are going to get a hot totally 
totally different Ben, where Jeff wakes up in the morning and says, hey, I'm gonna ban like 60 PS <laughs> today, you know? But I think, I think it's something that we're gonna need to wait and see how it works, but I, I don't have a very good feeling about it. I think it's gonna be mainly two metas switching out, maybe with a little bit of a difference if maybe there's a character that's, you know, banned a little bit different from like the last time. Maybe we've got the same four bands as two weeks ago, except for one other DPS who's different or another support who's different. So there's gonna be a little variation, but not a lot. That's what I'm afraid of. I hope I'm wrong. I hope the randomization is good enough to avoid that from happening, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. And yeah, it's gonna be a, bit, a little bit scary. The next thing would be to do with Overwatch League tokens. So they're really, really trying to get the viewers back on Overwatch League. Overwatch League, I think they did a really good step in going to YouTube because people are watching the videos in their own time, which of course it was going to happen if they decided to have 16 matches in one weekend. Of course, people would not be watching them all at the same time. It's just not possible. So what they've done now is they're trying to address the token issue because a lot of people are not really interested in the Overwatch League to learn from the pros and to understand how the game works and to kind of like the way I see it is in a very educative way. You know, I, I watch the games, I learn what they do. Uh, sometimes if I am not 100% sure on what it is that they're doing, I'll actually go to the Overwatch League replay viewer and I will actually watch that match from whatever perspective it is that I need to watch it from. And that's how I got better at Reinhardt as well, apart from the coaching that I got from the guy that was GM, which you can find the first video in the card above. I also learned quite a lot from watching the replay viewers of some of my favorite teams. I still have to watch a lot more JMAC. I think I'm going to be watching a lot more of that. I think London Spitfire definitely got themselves a really good main tech and I, I want to learn a little bit more from him as well. But it's something that obviously not most people are not going to be wanting to watch the Overwatch League for that. They're going to be wanting to watch it for entertainment and sometimes they just won't find it entertaining enough unless they gain something from it. Which if you ask me, I don't really like that. Uh, I mean, nobody's ever watched soccer or basketball or any other sport because they gain something from it even with um watching you know other esports you just kind of you just watch it because you love the game and you love the sport and that's why you're watching it not because you gain something from it so that's not really something that i like about the overwatch community don't kill me for saying it i just i just don't like that but i do understand that it is a part of the community now and a lot of people are not watching the overwatch league out of principle on the fact that they can't get tokens and and they're kind of fighting to get the tokens back. And this is the way that Blizzard is trying to do, which is they basically put out an offer. The official Overwatch League Twitter account announced that the players can now claim 100 tokens for free on PC or console by signing up for the League's email service. I found that email. I've put it down in the description below. If you want to sign up for that, you'll get 100 tokens. That's the equivalent of one eSport Overwatch skin by signing up before the offer expires on April 29th, 2020. You can expect to receive the Overwatch League tokens before May 6th. Now, there is a bit of a delay with that. Not entirely sure why, but I mean, if you're interested in getting the tokens, you know, feel free to sign up to the email below in the description and you'll be able to get those tokens. Just make sure that you do it before April 29th, which is when Wednesday, not this coming Wednesday, but the one after that, so Wednesday week. And that's it for today. This is all the news that I have for you today. Next video will be up on Tuesday, and that would be the one that I referred to on the card at the beginning of the video in case you were watching this video after it was already uploaded. So if you do like the content, press the like button and subscribe in case you would like to know when I upload next. If you press the bell icon, it'll tell you exactly when I upload every time that I do. Otherwise, if you don't press it, it won't actually tell you every time that I upload. It'll only be sometimes. And I promise you, I won't be on your phone all the time.
time. I only upload weekly, so it's not going to be something that's going to take up a lot of your space on your notifications list, I promise. So that's it really. If you would like to join my Discord, there's a Discord link at the bottom of the description and there's also my Twitter in case you would like to follow. I don't really tweet too much, but in case you would like to follow, you can do of course. And there's also of course the link to both my Twitch and my DLive in case you would like to follow my streams. That would be it. I wish you a lovely rest of the day and happy weekend and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!